Yeah. 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 Right. more information about using the VHF radio. Got back and the bilge, uh, the bilge pump was going off. Today, the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary visited our marina. We had U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary members on hand to answer questions about U.S. Coast Guard regulations and marine safety. They also set up a really cool booth with lots of information. In addition, they did vessel inspections. So we had them come upon our vessel so that we could find out what we were doing right, what we were doing wrong, and if they had any advice for us before we hit the open ocean. So this tells you where and when you can discharge things off your boat, waste. You put so for example, tells you what you can do with oil, you know, and then also have some notes on what's going, and you just turn it. Understand all that. You still got to know the difference. That's cool. What you can do with what? True and all that, and how to do all that, and you have to understand set and drift. Let's try. We found our inspector. I am Ajit from Marco Island Coast Guard Auxiliary. Flotilla 95. I'm here for your vessel's safety check. Do you have any questions, Krista? I don't have any other questions. I think it's great that you guys are out here. Um, you know, how often do you do things like this where you set up tents and come to marinas and things? Usually, at least once a year we do. But you can call us anytime. I'll give you my telephone number. And if, na if you or your friends or anybody wants it, uh, we'll come to the place where the boat is located and we do the inspection. Oh, that's fantastic. And we do it for the kayaks and yeah. paddleboard stuff. Yes, <laughs> for anything we need. Yeah. May I have your permission to come on the boat? Absolutely. Thank you. What are you checking right now? So right now, oh, sorry. I'm uh, checking the your PIN number as well as if it is registered, we check the registration number and length of the boat as well as it's powered by either gas or diesel, then area of operation and the type. You have applied. Yep. We have yeah, we sent in for the... Dis display numbers, so you are going to, in the back, you are going to write the name of the boat. Okay, the back, uh, on the transom, the yeah, boat is yeah. named already. Okay, okay. Yeah, there's a big PFD um, uh, container, uh, our throwable. Usually what we recommend is that when you're on the boat, you know, Try to keep it easily accessible. Keep it out. Not like this. Not like this. In, <laughs> in case of emergency, what happens is that all of a sudden you are trying to find out. It's zipped already. Yeah. yeah, so yeah it's yeah. hard to find out. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. need it when it's emergency. Yeah, yeah. And especially the throwable ones, what I recommend it, keep it by the side of the operator. Can you tell if they're working? Why are we looking at the head? Um, so the head can either, the Y valve can either be discharged immediately or it can go into the tank. Our um, our handle's broken, so we don't even know which way it's going right now. So we need to replace the handle. We have some other work to do on the head as well. Um, is that the recommendation or is that just? It's, it's a necessity. Yeah, it has to be it that way. It has to be, you know. So um, once we get that fixed, then we can start using the head. And dewatering device is just a bucket is enough for that. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> And uh, we don't have the mounted, okay. So basically what I will do is uh, you can get the the head chucked, okay, mm -hmm. and uh, get another fire extinguisher. And preferably we tell them to mount it. The reason is that it's a good idea to mount it near a galley where yeah. the, there is a, a fire so that's out. Yeah. Grab it. Okay. okay they, so grab it. And yep. one probably next to the operator of okay. the boat. And once you get those things, give me a call. I'll come. And before you go to Bahamas, we'll yeah. pass the boat and I'll give you a stick. I like it. Thank you. So it's a head, the fire extinguisher. Um, and was there anything else? And the nabbers. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Sounds great. And Thank we you want so to be safe when you go to Bahamas. Yes, <laughs> we do. Thank you so much. That was it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. We appreciate it. Okay. 
Um, Thanks so much. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye. All right. So Dan and I were out running errands in town and got back and the bilge, was, uh, the bilge pump was going off. So we opened it up, we're taking a look, trying to figure out what's going on. It's like eight or nine o'clock at night here, so it's fresh water. We'll have to take a look and uh, try to figure out where this is coming from. Not a good thing to come home to for sure. So we got home, bilge is going off, and I'm gonna guess that one of the, uh, one of the, what? See? She's like, I want a treat. She's, she's warning <laughs> us, no, you stay. Um, so I'm guessing maybe one of the, uh, of the hose clamps failed, maybe, um, cause I'm gonna guess once I get into this, uh, but still kind of scary when you get home and the, the, the bilge is full of water. The bilge pump is going off, um, and you're out, you know. First, first kind of crazy scenario that we've been through like that, so, um, so give us a second. Let's figure out what's going on. I gotta put the tape on. There it goes. Is it dry up there or what? No, it's not. Um, I thought maybe one of these might have failed, but that's not it. This is there's plenty of water. Um, is it bilge on on? It's on auto. It's an auto. Yep. But it's still there's not enough water. No, it's not running right now. Sorry, the other bilge comes for me. There we go. What's happening is we turn the water pressure on, and there is water coming out. So. Uh, give me a flashlight. Okay, go ahead. Okay. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, so we've figured out the problem. Go ahead. Okay. So, uh, this hose right here came off of that. And so when we... Okay, so when... Uh, uh, when we put the water pressure on, it's pushing the water from the tank into this, uh, out of this, and that just lost. It just came off due to the pressure. I need the light so I can, because we can't see anything in here. So we just need to reattach this to that easy fix. Okay. Okay. That's why there's so much extra. Give me a headlamp. Uh, this is this is pretty loose I mean this is it seems like it's just kind of warped a little bit so um, I think what we'll do is try to refresh the tubing so I'm gonna cut this this is called Dan's instant repair Dan's instant repair Okay, so, as you can see, the difference, if you get in there, this one has warped. This is a, quite a bit larger. Uh, you can see this one has just, uh, over time, has just kind of warped a little bit. So, no big deal. Um, so, we're going to just... Got the the hose on there. And it's just a matter of really digging it into that thing. And that's not easy because it's just not meant to be that big. So I can't you can see I can't get it on all the way. 
you can't see the underside of it, but it's, it's bubbling on the underside because it's too small, but at least hopefully this will solve the problem for tonight. Invented All right, well, I don't need to try that. Okay, turn the water pressure on. So we're gonna hopefully, okay. Fix is holding right now. Okay, that was the one we just fixed, so that's at least fixed for now. Um, okay, so hey, easy fix so far, and uh, on to the next uh, problem. How do you get to the beer when all your tools are everywhere? You got it. Okay. Ah, let's hope. <laughs> Coming up on the next episode of Sailing on a Whim, we have our first major fail trying to design a frame that will hold our new solar panels, and we also have our first visitor from home. Chris's mom arrives, so we show her around and introduce her to life in the marina. Stay tuned, and thank you for watching. <laughs>